Right, hi. Uh, I'm not going to do any stitching today, I don't think. I just wanted to show you something about like when I was there. So when I was there, I was asked to go there and do a workshop. And this was what they wanted me to teach in the workshop. So this was something I just played with. I make lace cloth a lot, as you probably noticed if you've been following me for the past couple of weeks. I seem to make nothing else. Um, but I was playing with it and embroidering on it and stitching on it and I didn't really put it in a little hoop apart from for photography purposes but the people from France saw it in the hoop on the internet and asked me to do a workshop regarding something like this. Well I never make hoop art, it's just not something that I do and it isn't something I intend to do in the future. But as a, a workshop vehicle it was absolutely perfect to be honest. Um, because, I mean, you can start it in the workshop, you've got the means of displaying it, you get explained how to finish the back, you get the materials to work with it, to finish it, uh, and there was also a little leaflet, but I haven't got any of them left. Um, anyway, that's irrelevant. So this is what the workshop was going to be about. Now, I explained to them in France that I didn't have any of this material, because these this was made literally with scraps. Um, I have a thing called a snippet jar. If you're new to my blog... I have snippet jars which are basically just big glass jars and any little bit of fabric that I snip off a project uh, it could be two inches by one inch or three inches by five inches it goes in my snippet jar so this was made with white pieces from the snippet jar so I explained to them that I couldn't replicate this and um, I could do something similar but it would be in a different colour perhaps so that was fine so there started a massive massive marathon to put together 20 kits for the classes um, so in, I'll show you what's in the kits in a moment but I actually managed I needed to make 21 pieces 20 for the classes and one for me to demonstrate on but when it came down to it the day before I went I realised I had more than that so I put together more kits and they were actually very good sellers and um, people like they like what you make in terms of pockets and finished pieces and pin cushions etc but they also like and I understand this they like to get a collection of things that they can take away and see an end product that they can achieve by you know by using the things you provided so um, I had this on display on my stand behind the kits that I had spare so and they were actually really popular I've got two of these left um, but that's all so that was a good thing that I made more of those the thing is I'm not a kit making person if I was to go there again I would say I would just prepare kits, finished pieces with a kit for everything and I have no doubts whatsoever that I would sell all of those because of the experience of last week and because of seeing the buying habits of the people that were there but I'm not going to do that because that isn't who I am. I'm an embroiderer uh, and I like to think I'm a teacher in inverted commas. I am not a kit assembler or a kit maker. I think it was so hard making all these pieces of lace cloth before I went it was really intense and I did nothing but sit on my sewing machine um, that isn't what I want for me so that won't be happening I won't be doing that um, but so in here they've they got a hoop um, and a piece of lace which is like mimicking what's going on here to go behind the off cuts the whole sorry the holes um, they got the piece of lace cloth that I made. Now each one of these took between an hour and two hours to make. So I made 30 I think. So that's 60 hours. Uh, no thanks. I don't want to spend the rest of my life just like a, a machine churning, churning, churning. That's not how I see embroidery. Embroidery to me is pleasure and relaxing and reconnecting with my past and stitching a piece of old tablecloth and remembering my nana and it's not about a mass production line and it never will be but like I say for the purposes of last week it was ideal so they got a piece of that and a piece of that and this actually obviously fits in the hoop and um, a piece of this which is again to do this in the hall and a piece of the original fabric that I used uh, to make this so that wasn't used in the kit, it wasn't used on the day in this process but I said to them that they had it because I thought they would like to see how this cloth had originated and they may want to make something that complements this and they've got more fabric there to do that with. So they absolutely loved the kits, um, they were delighted with the kits and they loved the lace cloth and I now know, and I'll be saying it in my sleep, 
that the French for lace is dentelle. Because I must have said that word more times than I can remember last week. So, along with that, they've got the hoop. And then they've got this little packet, which has a skein of cotton embroidery, two colours, which I felt complemented the cloth, wound on a little card with the French thing of the uh, colours, the translation in French of the colours and the, the number of the thread, the DMC 3609 and 369, and a little packet of needles. Okay, and I explained to them they got a milliner's needle, an embroidery needle, and a tapestry needle, um, and then a little packet of wadding in case they wanted to put any bump, bumpy bits on top. So that was my kit. So um, they went down a storm. But meantime, when I wasn't teaching, I was on my uh, in my booth. Um, sometimes I couldn't even get near. But I thought, what can I do? Well, I'm just sit I can't just sit and twiddle my thumbs. The chair was so uncomfortable. I was up and down, pacing, dead leg every day. I thought, well, just do some embroidery. Why not do embroidery? So I took a piece of this out of one of the kits and started to stitch on it. Now, to me, this is overworked because it was in a hoop and I was doing French knots and putting little bits of lace behind the holes and I was being watched constantly and it's so bizarre because I can do French knots and bullion knots till the cows come home, I could do them in my sleep. Can I do them when somebody's watching me? No. Can I do them when there's five French people stood behind me? No. Especially the bullion loops. Now if you've ever done one of my classes, I'd like to think that you know that I can do bullion loops without any problem. I, I, I was doing them last night. Not one single hiccup anywhere along the way. Do these in France? <laughs> Couldn't get my needle through. My hands were sweaty. It was horrible. I actually wondered whether I'd be able to continue with this because my hands were so sweaty when I was there in this hall. It was really hot and oppressive. And I had wet wipes and I kept doing my hands. Um, but, and it looks okay. But the truth will come out if there's any marks on here from my sweaty, sweaty hands when I don't stretch it. So I was doing bullion loops and people were watching me and there were ex like exclamation marks in the voice. Trump sank! They couldn't believe I was winding the thread on my needle 35 times. Um, so I think that amazed them. But the number of people who apparently, in France of all places, have never seen a French knot being made. Um, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. So highly overworked, more French knots than I would normally put on it. I'm not going to do anything with it. I told my class I was going to give it to the dog. I haven't got a dog, but that's what I told them. And then they started laughing and I said, well, actually, I haven't got a dog. So they went, oh, we knew. Well, they didn't they said it in French. We knew you were going to do that. And that's why I said, no, I need a new cloth to wipe my floor. So anyway, but I'll just stamp stretch this now and just keep it as a reminder. I won't do anything else with it. It'll just get rolled up and put in my little cupboard. So that's what I was doing when everybody was crowding my stall and then seeing me do this. I had maybe five people behind me, three people in front of me, and it's so embarrassing when you can't get your loops off for your bullion knots. So they didn't last very long. It became this, and it would be in the hoop, and I would be just pacing because the seat was so uncomfortable and even though my feet were crying one of the, it was one of those floors that really draw your feet um, so just pacing, it's easy to do French knots when you're pacing so I just thought I'd uh, explain that to you how I think it's overworked about the workshop being based on this about me disgracing myself not being able to accomplish bullion loops that's done my reputation untold harm and show you the kits that I put together um, and also when I was there I trapped my hand in a door I don't know if you can see this yeah and there's one there I trapped my hand in a door and it flattened my engagement ring it was like a well it was like a flat it was completely flat against my finger and my finger was like that with the ring on top of it flattened can you imagine how hard that was to get off it was like we had to try, my husband and I had to try and bend it kind of back in position really forcefully. I couldn't do it, he had to do it. Loads and loads of soap, anyway we got it off. So I've got to take that to the jewellers tomorrow and see what the damage is. So I've got a big bruise there and a big bruise there. I trapped my hand in a French door. So all sympathy will be very greatly received. So that's it. I just wanted to connect with you in a verbal way 
just to talk to you about the class. Um, we had a tra I had a translator who was lovely, she was an English woman who'd lived in France for a long time. Um, some of the students could speak a little bit of English, I could speak a little bit of French, so we muddled through because the translator wasn't always at my shoulder, she may be at another side talking to somebody else about something. In fact, after the first day I said to the translator she could take the class the next day because she knew everything now, uh, but she wasn't really volunteering for that unfortunately. So it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. So that is like a quick overview for you of what the class was about and you know how I felt about everything and about my poor hand. Sympathy please. Okay.